Happy Father's Day to everyone. A month ago, we celebrated Mother's Day to honor our mothers. Today is Father's Day and we give our highest respect and honor to all the fathers. As God has designed it, every human life has come through the union of the father and mother. We have to remember the fact that whoever has a mother has a father too. If we honor our mothers for who they are, we must honor our fathers as well. The fifth commandment of the Bible teaches us to honor our father and our mother. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Therefore, it is appropriate that we show the same respect and honor to both the parents. As we observe Father's Day today, we show our deepest respect and honor to all the fathers. Today being Father's Day, I want to share with you a sermon entitled Father's Day with Noah. I hope and pray that God will bless us through this sermon. Before we move further, let us briefly look at the background of Father's Day. Father's Day is observed around the world to honor the fathers and to celebrate fatherhood in the society. Since the Middle Ages, many Roman Catholic countries in Europe celebrate Father's Day as St. Joseph's Day on 19th March. The Catholic Church started St. Joseph's Day to honor Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, for what he did to nurture our Lord Jesus Christ. Father's Day has been observed on different dates in different countries during the months of March, May and June. In America, Father's Day was started through the initiatives of Miss Sonora Dodd in 1910. Sonora was the daughter of an American Civil War veteran, William Smart. When Sonora was 16 years old, her mother, Ellen Smart, died while delivering her sixth child. Sonora, the only daughter, helped her father, William, in the raising of her younger brothers. Having heard a sermon on the newly recognized Mother's Day, Sonora, who held high esteem for his father, felt that fathers need to be recognized too. Then she approached the Spoken Ministerial Alliance and suggested to observe Father's Day. Accordingly, the first Father's Day was celebrated on 19 June at Spoken in Washington, USA. Since then, many countries celebrate Father's Day on the third Sunday of June every year. On Father's Day, people honor their fathers by giving gifts such as Father's Day cards, coffee cups or other gifts to their fathers. As we celebrate Father's Day, it is appropriate that we share about an exemplary father from the Bible. As such, I have chosen to share about Noah, who is one of the model fathers in the Bible. Let us read a few verses from Genesis chapter 6. I am reading from the English Standard Version. Verse 5. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out men whom I have created from the face of the land, men and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, shame, Ham and Japheth. Verse 14. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. Verse 22. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. The story of Noah is a very rich story and one can look at it from different perspectives. 
Today we are looking at Noah from the father's perspective. As a father, Noah teaches us three lessons which are very important for the contemporary fathers. Let us examine the three lessons one after the other. First, Noah lived a righteous life. God created humans in his image so that they may live in communion with God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Having created humans, God looked at everything that he had made and said, It was very good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Unfortunately, from the third chapter of Genesis, we learned that sin and death entered the world due to human disobedience. In Genesis chapter 6, we are told that the humans had gone very far from God and were living in great wickedness. Genesis chapter 6. The Bible tells us that Noah lived in such a wicked and perverse generation. In those days, people planned only evil things in their hearts, and they were living godless lives. Seeing the human wickedness, God felt sorry that he had created humans on earth. So God decided to blot out human beings, including all living things from the face of the earth. In the midst of corrupt and wicked people, Noah lived a righteous and blameless life, the Bible says. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Genesis chapter 6 verses 8 and 9. Dear believers, have you ever thought how difficult it would have been for Noah to live a righteous life in a wicked society? If you were Noah, do you think you can live a righteous life when all your friends and people around you follow sinful life? The Bible tells us that Noah lived a righteous and blameless life even in his wicked generation. The world today is not very different from that of Noah's generation in which the evil dominates in the society. In the midst of all these challenging situations, there are many fathers who pursue godly lives. There are many religious fathers who keep their faith and walk with God in their daily lives. At the same time, there are many fathers who live wicked lives just like the majority during the time of Noah. If fathers don't live godly lives, we cannot expect the children to be different either. We must pray for ungodly fathers and help them to change from their wicked ways of life. Let us thank God for all the fathers and continue to pray that God will empower all the fathers to live godly lives like Noah in our world today. Second, Noah obeyed the Lord. The Bible tells that the earth was corrupt in God's eyes for it was filled with violence. God was very upset with the wicked human life and he determined to destroy all lives. So God told Noah that he would blot out human life and all living creatures with a great flood. Then God told Noah to build an ark of gopher wood to save the lives of his family and some lives of other living creatures. God told Noah not only the size of the ark, but also gave all the other details for the ark. We are not very sure how long it took for Noah to complete the ark, but it is believed that he took some 55 to 75 years to complete the huge ark. Noah obeyed the Lord and he built the ark exactly as God commanded him to do. The Bible tells, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. Because of Noah's obedience to God, God could save Noah's family and other selected living creatures from the flood. Dear fathers, if you were Noah, would you obey the Lord and build the ark? Noah must have invested lots of money and other resources to build such a big ark. 
How many fathers obey God in our daily lives today? God has created each one of us with a purpose. Today, God does not ask us to build an ark, but He has entrusted each one of us with a task or a job. God-given task comes in the form of government job, private job, business, and so on. How many of us take our God-given jobs seriously and carry out our responsibilities faithfully? There are many fathers who take their God-given jobs seriously and do their works with sincerity and commitment. If fathers do not obey God in their lives, how can we expect the children to obey God in their lives? Fathers must show good examples even in obedience and service to God. As we all know, the world is fighting with the COVID-19 pandemic at this time. Any time anyone may get sick and we don't know what will happen to us. As fathers, what is God asking us to do to save our family members and our society at this time? We need to listen to God and prepare our family members for any eventuality. Let us thank God for all the fathers who obey God and do their jobs faithfully. But there are also many fathers who do not obey God in their lives. Let us pray for them so that they will obey God and carry out their responsibilities faithfully. Third, Noah was over 500 years old when God told him to build an ark. He was married and the family was blessed with three sons, namely Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The three sons were also married, but they were yet to have children. As the Bible tells, Noah's family lived in a perverse and wicked generation. In the midst of all challenges, Noah kept his family intact. While teaching about the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus referred to the story of Noah. Jesus says that before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Matthew chapter 24 verses 37 and 38. As a God-fearing father, Noah was able to teach his sons to live godly lives even when they were surrounded by wicked and godless people. Not only that, Noah was able to teach and guide his daughters-in-law to live godly lives with the family members. Therefore, the entire family found favor in the sight of God, and God saved them from the great flood with which he blot the sinful people from the face of the earth. God not only saved Noah's family members, but he used them to bless the entire humanity with a new covenant. Genesis chapter 9 verses 1 to 17. Dear beloved fathers, God has graciously blessed us with our wives and children. How many of us are able to keep our family intact as Noah did in his generation? There are many fathers who live godly lives and take good care of their family members. They teach their wives and children not only in words but also by showing exemplary lives. We thank God for all godly fathers who take good care of their families with integrity. Unfortunately, there are also many fathers who do not care for their wives and children. There are many fathers who, instead of leading, stumble their wives and children from living good Christian life. The Bible teaches us that Noah was able to take care of his entire household or family members. Today, all fathers must learn a lesson to take care of our lives and our family members. If every father takes care of his life and the lives of his family, we can transform our society. Let us thank God for all the successful fathers today. Let us also pray that God will guide all the fathers to take care of their families and serve God with their families. Finally, I want to remind all the fathers that fatherhood is a great blessing and an honor in life. As much as fatherhood is an honor, it comes with challenging responsibilities as well. 
When we observe our society, we see so much corruption, violence, and many ungodly practices in our society today. If not worse, our society does not seem to be better than the society in Noah's time. In the midst of all these challenges, like Noah, let all the fathers live godly lives. As fathers, if we stand apart and live godly lives, God will show his favor on us. Just as God entrusted Noah to build an ark to save his family and other creatures, God has entrusted each one of us with a task today. As fathers, let us obey God, take our work seriously and fulfill God's purposes in our lives. As fathers, let us all be responsible in taking care of our family members. If we do so, God will not only save our families, but also use our families to bless the world. May God bless all the fathers, and may He renew our world. Amen.